write down the coordinates of the turning point of f so f of x is equals to minus x plus 3 to the power 2 plus 4 right uh, so the coordinates of the turning point of this function uh, will be minus 3 and 4 right we can clearly see that in our equation but then for most people it's a bit confusing when the equation is like this they like to solve it first and then use x is equals to minus b divided by 2a so if we do that we're gonna have f of x being equals to minus x squared plus 6x plus 9 that's what you get when you solve x plus 3 to the power 2 and then plus 4 right so we're gonna have minus x squared minus 6x minus 9 plus 4 so this is equal to minus x squared minus 6x minus 5 right if you see x is equal to minus b divided by 2a you're gonna get minus minus 6 divided by 2 minus um 1 right which is equal to minus 3 and then if you substitute minus 3 into f of x, you're going to get 4. So indeed, the coordinates of our turning point, we have minus 3 and 4, right? But this is uh, the equation of f of x, right? We're going to need this equation as time goes. So let's just keep it there because we're going we're gonna to need it soon. Right. And then 5.2, write down the range of f. So let's look at our function here. Uh, so we've already established that uh, the y value here at the turning point is 4, right? And we can see that our graph never goes above 4. It just touches there at 4 and then it goes infinitely down, so to say, right? So we can say that y is less or equals to 4, right? For all the values of x, y is either 4 or less than that. All right, so that is the range of our function f. And then uh, 5.3, 5.3, uh, this, this is where uh, things start to get interesting. Show that uh, the x coordinates of a and b are minus 5 and 2. So we say that f of x is equals to so we have our function here minus x squared minus 6x minus 5 right so if we want to find the x coordinate of a and b what we have to do is equate f of x our parabola right and the g of x our straight line so the equation of our straight line we have g of x is equals to x plus 5 so if we equate those two we're gonna get uh, minus x squared minus 6x minus 5 is equals to x plus 5 right so we're gonna have minus x squared we take in x to the left hand side we're gonna get minus 5x and then plus 5 is gonna be minus 5 right so we have um not minus five but minus seven right so we're gonna have minus seven x and then minus ten is equals to zero right just one mistake and you're gone right so i have minus x squared here which is you know confusing me a bit so i'm just gonna multiply everything by minus one right uh so that i can have x squared plus seven x plus 10 is equals to zero now it looks clean i can go ahead and factorize so i'm gonna have that there and then now the question i'm asking myself which two numbers do i multiply and get 10 and then when i add i get plus 7 that is 5 and 2 so i'm gonna have x plus 5 and x plus 2 so it's easy to see now that x is equals to minus 5 or x is equals to minus 2 and then this is the x value of a and this is the x value of b it's quite straightforward there isn't really anything um complicated in this one right unlike uh 5.4 and 5.5 so let's look at um 5.5 so 5.5 is saying that hence determine the values of c 
uh, for which minus x plus c plus 3 squared plus 4 is equals to x plus c plus 5 as one negative and one positive root at this point our roots are at uh, let me just change the color real quick uh, at minus 5 and minus 2 right that's where our roots are at the moment uh based on 5.4 so now we need to shift our graph let's not forget that x plus something x plus something is shifting our graph right so let's shift our graph such that now uh one root is negative and then another root is positive right so if we have minus 2 here at b we need to shift our graph uh just above two units to the right just above two units to the right then one root is going to be slightly greater than zero and the other one is still going to be <coughs> less than zero right so uh, that's what we want to do so another thing to remember here is that if you have x plus two you are shifting your graph two units to the left right you're shifting your graph two units to the left but then if you have x minus two you're shifting it two units to the right i know it's counterintuitive that the plus is to the left and minus is to the right in this case but that's what it is right so we need c to be just slightly greater than minus two so that we can shift our graph just more than two units to the right so if c is just slightly greater than minus two then our problem is solved we're gonna have one negative and one positive root right I i'm interested in how you guys interpreted this question can you please just let me know in the comments if you don't mind i would really appreciate that right uh 5.6 uh 5.6 is saying that the maximum distance between f and g in the interval uh x of a and x of b so yeah in this interval let me just erase this so that we can have a bit of uh clarity right let me just uh put that there real quick right so this is the interval we're interested in this is the interval we are interested in right so the question is saying the maximum distance between f and g in that interval is k the maximum distance if uh h of x is equals to g of x plus k determine the equation of h in the form h is equals to so we already have g of x right so to determine the equation of h of x we just need the value of k and then we are told that k is the maximum distance between f and g in that interval right so let's just go ahead and try find the maximum distance between f and g in that interval right so how do you find maximum distance you say the graph on top minus the graph at the bottom is equals to zero right and then after that you're going to derivate the result and equate to zero uh, let me show you what i'm talking about before i just confuse you so we have f of x minus g of x right that is how uh you find uh the equation for the distance between the two graphs so f of x minus g of x will be equals to uh what's our equation for f of x again um where is it here it is so we have minus x squared minus 6x minus 5 and then we subtract in g of x which is x plus five right we're trying to find an equation for the distance between the two graphs right so we're gonna have minus x squared minus seven x minus ten so this is the equation for the distance between the two graphs so if we want to find the maximum distance we have to derivate uh, this equation and equate it to zero right so if we say distance uh, the derivative of the function for the distance is equals to zero then we're gonna have uh minus 2x we can just use the power rule right 
uh, minus 7 is equals to 0. So we're going to have minus 2x being equals to um, being equals to 7. Right. So x is clearly equals to minus 7 divided by 2. So let me just put minus 7 divided by 2 in the calculator. It's minus 3.5, right? And minus 3.5 is between uh, minus 5 and minus 2. So right, that is um, the x value for which at the distance between the two functions is at a maximum, right? Now we just need to find the distance by equating this answer into this equation, right? And then that will be the value of k and we're gonna consequently have uh, the function h of x. So if we sub uh, x into that equation, we're gonna have minus, minus seven divided by two squared minus seven, minus seven divided by two minus 10, right? So that is um, our maximum uh, distance. So let me just uh, put that in my calculator and see what I'm getting. So minus 10 and I'm getting 2.25. I'm getting 2.25 uh, units, right? So the value of k is 2.25 uh, based on what I'm proposing here. So now we can uh, go ahead and say that uh, each of x is equals to uh, g of x, which is x plus 5, and then plus k, which is 2.25, right? So we have x, and then what's 5 uh, plus 2.25? Uh, that is plus 7.25. Uh,